It is Friday, February 5th. I'm Sam Cedar. And I'm Lucy Steiner. Which one of these stories will you be talking about today? Joe Biden is ending U.S. involvement with Saudi Arabia's devastating war in Yemen. It's bad news for arm merchants, but a hopeful sign for humanitarians. Meanwhile, an investigation into the people charged in connection to last month's Capitol insurrection finds some came trained and ready for battle. And lastly, another voting machine company is suing Fox News for spreading lies about voting fraud in the presidential election. It's one of the largest libel complaints in history, with damages of $2.7 billion at stake. You're listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie, and these are the stories you need to know. It's about time. The U.S. has announced an end to its support for Saudi-led offensive operations in Yemen, this according to The Guardian. Officials cited the role the bombing campaign has had in creating the world's worst humanitarian crisis. The announcement was made by Joe Biden's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, in a preview of a speech Biden delivered at the State Department yesterday. The distancing of Washington from Riyadh is one of the most conspicuous reversals of Donald Trump's agenda. But it also marks a break with the policies pursued by Barack Obama, who had backed the Saudi offensive in Yemen, although he later sought to impose constraints on its air war. A bipartisan majority in Congress had previously voted to cut off support to the Saudi campaign, according to The Guardian, but Trump used his veto to block the move. The U.S. will also freeze arms sales to Saudi Arabia and name a special envoy to Yemen to put more pressure on the Saudis, Emiratis, and the Houthi forces they are fighting to make a lasting peace agreement. Spokesperson for Campaign Against Arms Trade described the move to The Guardian as a long overdue step towards ending the catastrophic and brutal war in Yemen. The group said, quote, with the U.S. ending in this support, the onus is now firmly on the U.K. government to follow suit or face international isolation. For the U.K. to continue to sustain a war that its closest ally is trying to end would be an untenable and shameful position, end quote. For the first time in years, it's possible to foresee an end to this catastrophe. House Democrats yesterday asked Donald Trump to testify under oath for his Senate impeachment trial, according to the AP. The request from House impeachment managers warns that any refusal to testify could be used to support a conviction. Trump's spokesman said Trump will not testify. The Senate impeachment trial starts next Tuesday, February 9th. Trump is charged with inciting an insurrection at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. And we are learning more about that insurrection all the time. The New York Times investigated the backgrounds of 175 people who have been charged in connection to the assault on the Capitol. At least 21 of those charged so far has ties to militant groups. At least 22 were current or former members of the military. More than a dozen were clear supporters of the conspiracy theory QAnon, but a majority expressed few organizing principles outside a fervent belief in the false assertion that Trump had won re-election. The Times Review suggests that many of those in the horde were likely disorganized, but some groups and individuals came to the Capitol trained and prepared for battle. Prosecutors have said some of the people involved in the riot could face charges of seditious conspiracy, according to the Times. No such charges have yet been filed. A majority of charges so far are for violations like trespassing or disorderly conduct or for obstruction of a congressional proceeding. Many of these are misdemeanors. Stakes are certain to increase, however, as investigators put pressure on people already in custody and as they determined who killed a Capitol Police officer and who placed pipe bombs at nearby buildings. We, of course, will keep you posted. Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin, that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off your order when you use the code MAJORITY at checkout. And all shipping is free. That's coupon code MAJORITY at JustCoffee.coop. The bills are coming due. The Associated Press reports that a voting technology company is suing Fox News, three of its hosts, and two former lawyers for Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell, for $2.7 billion. The company charges that the defendants conspired to spread false claims that the company helped steal the U.S. presidential election. The 285-page complaint filed yesterday in New York State Court by Florida-based Smartmatic USA is one of the largest libel suits ever undertaken. 
January 25th, a rival election technology company, Dominion Voting Systems, sued Giuliani and Powell for $1.3 billion. Unlike Dominion, whose technology was used in 24 states, Smartmatic's participation in the 2020 election was restricted to Los Angeles County. This according to the AP. Smartmatic's limited role notwithstanding, Fox aired at least 13 reports falsely stating or implying the company had stolen the 2020 vote in cahoots with Venezuela's socialist government. This alleged disinformation campaign continued even after then-Attorney General William Barr said the Department of Justice could find no evidence of widespread voter fraud. The complaint alleges that for Smartmatic, the effects of the negative publicity were swift and devastating. Death threats, including against an executive's 14-year-old son, poured in as internet searches for the company surge, Smartmatic claims. According to the AP, the complaint also alleges that Fox hosts Lou Dobbs, Maria Bartiromo, and Janine Pirro also directly benefited from their involvement in the conspiracy. The lawsuit alleges that Fox went along with the well-orchestrated dance due to pressure from newcomer outlets such as Newsmax and One America News, which were stealing away conservative pro-Trump viewers. Once again, it all comes down to ratings and the dollars. And now for some quicker quickies. Quicker quickie. The House voted along party lines last night to remove the conspiracy theorist Georgia Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene from her two committee posts. Only 11 Republicans joined with Democrats in the vote, which came about in response to Greene's long record of, frankly, insane comments and posts, some of which condone threats of violence against Democrats. As disturbing as Greene's beliefs are, it's even worse to see the Republicans close ranks to defend her. Ingredients in many baby foods are contaminated with heavy metals, like arsenic, lead and cadmium, a congressional investigator said yesterday. This according to the New York Times. Investigators reserved their harshest criticism for three companies that did not provide requested information to the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. Walmart, which sells Parents' Choice and Parents' Choice Organic Products, Sprout Organic Foods, and Campbell Soup Company, maker of Plum Organics Baby Foods. Consider yourself advised. Prosecutors on Wednesday sought a new arrest warrant and a higher bond for Kyle Rittenhouse, who is charged with fatally shooting two people amid protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin last summer. This according to the Washington Post. They allege that the 18-year-old failed to notify authorities of a change in address. They also say Rittenhouse had minimal incentive to comply with his bond conditions because his $2 million bond had been paid by, quote, dubious internet fundraising campaigns, end quote. Go fund me a killer. How creepy is that? The Biden administration is reviewing whether it can provide student debt relief through executive action, according to the AP. Biden previously said he supports erasing up to $10,000 in student debt through legislation. His position changed yesterday with a tweet from White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. The tweet came hours after a group of congressional Democrats, including Senators Chuck Schumer and Elizabeth Warren, urged Biden to use executive action to forgive $50,000 in federal student debt for all borrowers. Just do it, Joe. Just do it. Quicker. Quickie. Hey, that's all for today's AM Quickie. Yeah, join us this afternoon at noon or later as a podcast.